The Creator is a dark sci-fi story about humanity's final fight for survival against artificial intelligence in a world where human expression is a dying breed. So, you know, fantasy stuff that we're definitely not dealing with these days. Here to tell me more about that is the director of The Creator, Gareth Edwards. Hey, thanks hey, so much for joining how me. how you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I kind of want to start off by, if you'll indulge me, paying you a compliment. I think one thing that you're really great at is kind of communicating scale of a big apocalyptic threat. So what did you learn from Rogue One and Godzilla that you carried over to the creator when it comes to communicating the scale of these giant threats? Oh, oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, I think the thing I probably learned most from Star Wars mm -hmm. was that... Um, what Star Wars does so well is it has um, imagery that is, or ideas that are kind of like ancient past, yeah. like myth, mythology and and uh, spirituality. And like people describe Star Wars as science fiction, but really I think a better description is more, it's got more in common with like a biblical epic or a, yeah. or a fantasy film or something. Yeah. Um, just happens to have robots and spaceships. And, and I wanted to make a film where it was like very sort of ancient in some way, like very timeless with science fiction on top. And and to me, traveling is, you know, through my life, the place that does that the most is um, like Southeast Asia, where you have this sort of strange mix of um, like Buddhist temples and ancient jungle overgrown um, structures and stuff and, and a lot of spirituality. And then you have these like mega city sci-fi uh, things that seem like something from the future. And that combination to me is like really exciting and, and and so like that was basically the setting for where I decided to put the creator. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And so I want to talk a little bit about the AI of it all. Um, so obviously in the creator, it takes the form of a child. Uh, so why was that important for you? Um, well, actually, spoiler alert, the creator is not the child. Oh, um, right here first. <laughs> yeah, the creator is something else. Yeah. Yet to be found out when you watch the movie. But it's, yeah. um, I just like the idea of, um, Essentially, like there's this prediction, like we're going to have AI. It's going to feel very real, very human. Like we already kind of have it now. Mm -hmm. There's going to come a point where AI will be smarter than us. And that's the big hope or fear, whichever way you want to look at it. And in a sense, that's what the child in our movie is. It's the first, everything else in the movie that's AI is kind of copy and paste from a human. They scan people and they kind of print the brain and a copy of them. And that's how they make AI. Um, you, there's adverts and billboards to donate your likeness mm -hmm. in our world in the movie. And, um, and so this is the big fear that there's going to be an AI that is going to supersede, you know, the intellect of humans and basically rule the world. And so they, they learn it exists. They've managed to crack it. There it is. And it, they go over to destroy it. And John David Washington plays the main character that's in this kind of special forces group that has to kill this thing. Mm -hmm. And then obviously defines it and it's like a six year old girl. And that's where it all starts to unravel. And it's that whole thing of like, if you could stop World War II by going back in time and killing Hitler, the, 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 you know, the, the only problem is as a little kid, would you still do it? And, and if you did do it, are you just as bad as them and all that sort of stuff? And so essentially John David's kind of escorting uh, the child through this like futuristic war zone to its execution ultimately yeah. um, and starts to like grapple with how he starts to question everything he kind of presumed and understood about yeah. these people and what's going on. And, and um, it's, there's no sort of easy answers. Yeah. And talking more about, you know, that AI, you know, you've said before that the creator coming out in this kind of moment where AI is such a big conversation that it was almost kind of a fluke. Yeah. What do you think that says about the speed with which this technology is evolving? It's, I mean, even the experts, like you listen to any of the experts, they talk about, they thought, most of them thought it was like 30 years from now mm -hmm. that we'd get to this level we're at today. And, and it surprised everyone. And it's, it's because basically, you know, the process that makes a human brain is, it's quite a straightforward system, like these neural networks people have heard of. And basically they replicated that in computers. Yeah. And, you know, unless we're magical, you know, and, and you believe in religion and stuff, we, sh it should be a, we should be able to replicate it. Whatever's going on in here, mm -hmm. we should be able to copy it. And they sort of did. And it was like, oh, hang on a minute. This is not easier, but a lot more straightforward than we thought it was going to be. And this is happening a lot faster. And I don't know what that says about us, but it like, 
And that's kind of what the movie's about. It's like, it, it's like holding a mirror up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and going, like, are we special? You know, and to them, we are the creator. Like, we're God, mm -hmm. in their opinion, and all those sort of things. And, like, it was, uh, I don't know, it's a funny, a fascinating subject that yeah. I thought was going to be, like, I basically, you have to, when you make a movie, you have to type in a date. You know, you yeah. say, you know, that, that future far off date. And I picked 2070. And, like, now I'm thinking I should have picked 2020. Maybe 2023. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true, though. And I find it really, you kind of touched on this, um, but you do so much sci-fi. And... Why is sci-fi such a good avenue to kind of explore human nature? Um, I think because what you can do in science fiction that you can't do in other genres is you take just one aspect about the world, anything, mm -hmm. and you just crank it up to 11. Like yeah. you just make it exaggerated. Like what if you could make artificial people, you know, whatever it is. And it allows you then to explore similar stories you've always been very used to, but you sort of see it through this new prism. And I think it's it's sort of clearer in a weird way because it's an amplified version of reality and ideas get clearer and it's sort of exaggerated. And so, so I don't know, it's a way of like exploring things that um, like my favorite TV show when I was young was the Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, like now obviously there's Black Mirror and it's very similar in its approach is it just allows you to kind of point out the con like the, the hypocrisy of the way we are, you know what I mean? Like, there's something that never truly gets tested because we can just go about our daily lives and not really have to um, deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then, it, but if this was different, it would stare us in the face and go, "You're full of," <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like there's a problem here. Yeah. And science fiction allows you to go, "Oh, hang on a minute, what is true? What isn't?" You know. Yeah. I, I really that's what I like about it. Yeah, Gareth, thank you so much. The Creator is out this September. IGN has a lot more human-generated content coming up ahead on our Comic-Con live show, so stay tuned right here.